morning, we're preparing you for your day ahead with the important stories you need to know about coronavirus. And this afternoon, we'll get an update from Governor Roy Cooper about his coronavirus task force and the efforts to contain the spread of the virus. Also, the new numbers on testing and the number of positive cases. Today's briefing is at 3 o'clock, and of course, we'll carry it live for you right here on Channel 9. And you can also stream it live through our WSOC TV app. And this morning, trading resumes on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Back in March, the exchange moved to electronic only trading. When traders do return, though, they have to go through screenings. Before they can enter, they have to wear a mask. Once they're inside, they will not be allowed to take public transportation to get to work either. There's also going to be limits to the number of brokers allowed on the floor at any given time. Members of the Mecklenburg County Republican Party are moving forward with plans to host the Republican National Convention. However, the future of the convention is now in jeopardy. This is after a series of tweets from President Trump threatening to pull it if he is not allowed full attendance. Eyewitness News reporter Gina Esposito is live for us in Uptown. Gina, this could cause big problems for the city if it is canceled abruptly. Yeah, it would be a messy and complicated breakup. There's a contract in place between the city, the county, the CRVA, and the host committee, but President Trump isn't personally part of it. At this point, one of those parties would have to breach that contract, risking legal action. Now, Monday, President Trump fired off a series of tweets suggesting Charlotte could lose the RNC, saying Governor Roy Cooper is in, quote, shutdown mode and unable to guarantee we will be able to have full attendance. Those tweets stirred big reactions actions from local leaders. So I think that it's unrealistic for the president or anybody to expect Governor Cooper, uh, our state or county health directors, to be able to guarantee anything about what three months from now looks like. In a statement, a spokesperson for Governor Roy Cooper says officials are working with the RNC saying, quote, North Carolina is relying on data and science to protect our state's public health and safety. Now, so much has already been done to prepare for the RNC. For more than a year, safety plans have been drawn up. Millions of dollars have been spent. If the RNC is considering breaking up with Charlotte, that word hasn't made its way to Mecklenburg County GOP vice chair. I haven't heard that from anybody over at the RNC. I think it would be awfully difficult to do anything in 90 days, let alone a major convention. Now, there's still a lot of uncertainty about what things will look like here in August. We do know the city and county are expected to release guidance mm -hmm. on this event and other large events next month. John. Yeah, so we'll have to see how all this will play out. Gene Esposito live for us this morning. Now, last week we told you about a New York Times report that the White House and Republican officials were quietly looking into a scaled down version of the RNC in Charlotte. The Times said that Republican officials were looking at backup plans that include limiting the number of visitors to Charlotte and only allowing delegates. And CMS is set to discuss student assignment at two schools tonight. There's a public hearing for Providence Springs and McKee Road Elementary Schools, and it's a virtual meeting. So if you want to speak up, then you have to sign up by noon today. And CMS is required to do a student assignment review every six years. Its goal is to improve access to education for students in underserved or underperforming areas and to create more diverse schools. The board approved its most recent plan in January of 2017. And tonight, Caldwell County Schools will hold a special celebration for the class of 2020. Starting at 530, South Caldwell High School will display nearly 350 banners with portraits of graduating seniors. There are also plans to put luminaries on the sports fields with the scoreboards lit up with 2020 to honor those seniors. Well, on Friday, hair and nail salons were given the green light to open for business with safety and social distancing mm -hmm. requirements. Yeah, but not all salons were ready, and some will open their doors for the first time today. Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Castura is live in NOTA this morning to explain why some will continue to wait just a bit longer. Anthony? Well, many salons took the weekend to prepare for their reopening and will open their doors starting today. But for other salons like Shayla V here in Noda behind me, they have made the difficult decision to remain closed to prepare even more. There are all kinds of changes in regards to how salons and barbershops operate right now with social distancing and masks. Salon owner Levette Stembridge says she's using this time to paint and deep clean. And when her customers do finally come back, they'll know they're in a safe environment. She opened in 2008 when the economy crashed. Fast forward 12 years and she feels like she's starting all over again. And after operating for months with no income, she says she's exhausted. I'm tired. I'm beyond tired. I, I, 
can't even express it. So if we don't want no type of viruses, no nothing hanging out. We've been bleaching and cleaning and painting and doing everything that we possibly can to try to make sure it's safe for everyone. The STEM Bridges Salon may not open until next week, but some stylists are already back in business. We talked with one stylist from Supercuts in South End who says that the force break has been difficult, but says that her customers are just thankful to be back in the chair. They just are grateful to get a haircut. Nobody's had a problem wearing a mask. That's a big change for us and our customers, but everybody's just been very grateful. You can see there is a bit of a difference of opinion there, but both women tell us that operating with safety in mind is critical for their industry. Brittany? Just so many decisions to make. Anthony, thank you. Well,